Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Davidson. Welcome to our abbreviated worship service for Pentecost 14, August 25th, 2024. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today, a portion of the gospel lesson, Mark 7, verses 3 and 4. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God in the name of Jesus. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. How many times have you gone into a local establishment, a restaurant, and you see a sign above the sink in the restroom that says, employees must wash their hands? It's placed there by the health department with good reason. They want good sanitation habits to stop the spread of disease. How many times have you as a parent or a grandparent have asked your kids or grandkids before it's time to eat, have you washed your hands? Did you wash your hands when you came in from playing outside? We don't want any type of contamination entering our bodies. We see in the gospel lesson for today that in Jesus' day and age, they were persnickety about hand washing. The Pharisees were persnickety about hand washing. They had a tradition that no one was to eat unless any no one is to eat anything unless they wash their hands. The washing was ritualistic. They washed anything and everything. Cups, bowls, utensils, even tables and chairs. Uh, they too were attempting to spread, uh, stop the spread of uh, contamination. But the contamination they were seeking to prevent was solely on religious grounds. As Jews, they were members of God's chosen people, and so they didn't want to associate with anything that, was, that they would consider and that God would consider unclean. So they believed that the Gentiles were unclean, and so they would go to great lengths not to get it contaminated by using the same furniture or eating utensils that a Gentile had used. So they washed. They washed. They sanitized. They didn't want to get contaminated, to come into contact with the Gentiles who are not God's people. Our Lord Jesus Christ in his ministry emphasized that in the coming age there will be a great banquet. A great banquet at the end of the age, celebrating God's people, united with God forever. Celebrating the new heaven and new earth. Jesus described this banquet in his parables, in Matthew chapter 22, we read, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And when he instituted the Lord's Supper, he said that he would not drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Christ has prepared a heavenly banquet for everyone to eat and drink in the kingdom of God. Now, to be certain, no one can come to Jesus' banqueting table as a result of their own righteousness or perfection. In fact, the Bible says no one can eat of this heavenly banquet because our lives are contaminated with sin. But God's good news is that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, into the world to pave the way for sinners to have fellowship with God, to partake of this heavenly banquet that will be celebrated. Jesus paved the way and made it possible for every sinner to feast at his table because Jesus himself has taken on the sins of the world, the sins of every human being, including your sin and my sin. Jesus took on the contamination. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He took on the damnation of our sins so that we might be declared forgiven and cleansed of all of our unrighteousness. Now, Jesus has cleansed you in the waters of your holy baptism. In baptism, God the Holy Spirit has washed away your sin. And he has given you a holy, heavenly, sacred washing. The Bible says, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God so that we may draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. This baptism, this washing, this sacred washing is an ongoing washing away of your sins. Though your sins be as scarlet, Jesus has washed them away and made them as white 
as wool and the blood of the Lamb. There's only one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And in your baptism, you've become a child of God, a believer in Jesus, a new creation in the sight of God. But for what purpose? It's to be a living witness to others concerning the life and salvation that God offers to all in Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, to be wise as serpent, as meek as doves. So don't be anxious about what you're to speak or what you're to say, or what you're, because what you will say will be given to you. For it's not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. See, you've been baptized. You've been chosen by God. You have received the washing away of all of your sins. You've been given faith to believe in Jesus, and that faith has been given so that you might go out and share the good news of Jesus Christ with those around you, those who do not believe in Jesus, not afraid of being contaminated by them. You are to go and to be witnesses of the good news of Jesus Christ. The Pharisees were afraid of mixing with unbelievers so that they wouldn't be contaminated by their sinfulness and therefore become unclean. But we see in Acts chapter 10 with Peter's vision on the roof where he sees all these unclean animals come down from heaven on a sheet and God says, don't make unclean what I've made clean. Then Peter has this encounter, this meeting with Cornelius, a Gentile believer. And Peter then understands the vision that God has made all things clean because Jesus has washed away the sins of every human being. He's given that to every human being. It's offered to you, and you receive that by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. You see, God, as Peter came to realize, God shows no partiality. So your life has been given to you to go out and to witness to those people who do not believe in Jesus. Your sins have been washed away, so you don't have to worry about being contaminated with the sins of others. Rather, you're to go to the lost sheep to bring the light of Christ and the hope and salvation to all who do not believe in Jesus. For Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how, is salt, how shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. He also said, you are the light of the world, the city set on the hill. It can't be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Whenever you wash your hands, take a bath, shower, to wash away the dirt and grime of the previous day, I want you to remember something. You have an even more important washing, a sacred washing, the waters of your baptism. God has washed away your sins and given you faith in Jesus Christ so that as God's child, enlightened by the love and enlightened by faith in Jesus, you might go out into the world to make a difference to share the light and love of Christ with those who do not believe. To the glory of God and in Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep both your hearts and minds through faith in the one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and be with you always. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Please join us next week. Labor Day weekend, where a different message will be proclaimed at Redeemer Lutheran Church, 1400 Concordia Drive, Lancaster, Ohio. We worship Sunday mornings at 1015. Until then, have a great week. May the Lord bless you and keep you.